thank you. So I'm Yannick Autre from the French Ministry of Ecological Transition. Thank you for the introduction, Pinar. Um, I will go very fast on um, uh, on what already Thierry pre uh, presented a bit a bit earlier about about uh, global challenge that we have to face. Um, we really are at a nexus of needs uh, between several stakeholders, not only at national, regional, but at international scale, uh, to be uh, to be addressed. We have several. Um, sorry for my glasses. I, I need also them for for looking in a close way. Um, so we need really to uh, to um, to work in a global uh, in a global approach. And uh, it's only in a re very recent uh, time that uh, this need has been um, has been highlighted uh, as um, as a shared need. The first uh, global approach was only done in 2018 uh, during the COP uh, preparation of the COP 14 and uh, by in March one year ago in March 2022 there was also the first resolution uh, adopted by the United Nations uh, dedicated to uh, sustainable and resilient infrastructure and it was really the first time that we had a global approach able to try to first to answer to the need addressed by uh, OECD, United Nations, uh, Europe, and several stakeholders that are really exploring how to deal, how to mainstream infrastructure and biodiversity in a more uh, resilient way and more uh, flexible way. And um, as Thierry said, he mentioned a bit earlier, uh, the amount of money that he mentioned a bit earlier, it was in 2021, but uh, OECD updated its amount of money between 2021 and 2022, and the average amount of money invested in infrastructure will be closer in upcoming years to $3,500 billion a year until 2030. So we, in one year, we gain uh, $500 billion a year more in investing in infrastructure. But in the same time, we didn't invest so much uh, on environmental impact assessment. OECD is trying maybe to improve a bit more on uh, what has been spent on biodiversity assessment. Uh, that is between $50 billion a year uh, for CBD in 2018, or maximum of $90-$50 billion a year in 2020. So we, we really have a gap. Uh, to, uh, to, to, to face and um, also policies uh, that address uh, those gaps are really uh, siloed. And um, we have, um, and I, I will stop, and I, I will just stop here and I will just make the wrap up and I, after I, it will be my conclusion of uh, the discussion. I just, uh, we have really to, uh, sorry, my computer is locked. We really have to face a, a challenge uh, to uh, to be done, and uh, in the policy group that I had to uh, to manage, uh, we started the discussion about um, a very pragmatic point: uh, the fact that we have two kind of infrastructure. Uh, we have 99% of infrastructures that are already existing, and maybe 1% that are uh, ongoing to be created in project, uh, but when you are take, uh, taking into account the budget, you have the total opposite. You have 99 of the budget that is dedicated to new infrastructure, maybe less, uh, and the other part for maintenance. So it's really a challenge. But for new projects, biodiversity with uh, environmental impact assessment for uh, new challenges to reduce also the pressure of, uh, of um, of uh, problems, you it's biodiversity is well taken into account. But what to do uh, when you have 99% uh, of your uh, patrimonium that is already existing and that need also to be associated, that, that need also to integrate biodiversity, and uh, it's also a need also to reevaluate uh, to reevaluate also um, the role of uh, infrastructure in two territories and. Uh, or to, um, uh, to take into account um, uh, those uh, challenges in a, more, uh, in a more broader way on how to connect uh, highway, roads, waterways all together to optimize also the need, um, the, the knowledge, and uh, to reduce also the time between 
uh, expression of needs and uh, capacity to, to answer to those, uh, to those needs. And actually, policies are really challenging for operators, but also for uh, all the kind of stakeholders, including for uh, representatives of, of ministries on how to manage it. And uh, the fragmentation of actors is really, um, is really a challenge. And one of the reasons of this, of this fragmentation and one of the reasons of the difficulty to have um, uh, a strong, uh, strong policies on this point is really the capacity that we have uh, to, um, to evaluate also uh, benefits that biodiversity can, uh, can bring and how to evaluate uh, it through indicators that needs also to be, um, to be developed. Uh, we have also uh, data, but what to do with, uh, with data based on biodiversity, how to integrate them uh, into uh, such, uh, such indicators. And we, we really, uh, it was one of the words that was expressed by uh, some of the participants in my, in my um, workshop. Uh, it was also the fear to do. Uh, we, we fear to do bad, or we fear to do uh, only, uh, because it's really something that needs also to, to, be, uh, to be adapted. Uh, there is also uh, a lot of contradictory pressure. Uh, we have a pressure from um, uh, um, from policymakers, we have a pressure of internal for companies, uh, we have a pressure from society itself. Uh, that is addressing uh, contradictory needs. We need also uh, to move, we need also to protect biodiversity, but we need also to, for, for uh, well-being, we need also several things all the, in the same time, uh, all together. And uh, it's really difficult for, uh, for each stakeholders to move forward and to um, to develop an integrated vision, it's, it's really hard to, to make a, a live uh, synthesis of, of discussion. And, uh, and uh, Sylvain and Carme, it will be a challenge for you too. Um, uh, and uh, what was said uh, in, in the group is that we need also, if we want to have better policies, we need really uh, to have uh, a new point of view, the nexus of problems, the nexus of challenge that we are addressing today needs also to uh, to move forward in a new way of doing and if we want really to have a better symbiosis between mobility and biodiversity in the same way we need really to think in another way or way of of doing research innovation and application uh, all in the same on the borders that we are uh, living today it's not only borders between countries it's also borders between infrastructure it's uh, borders between approach and we need, if we want to address uh, in, an, in a more equilibrated way uh, this challenge, we need really to, um, to address uh, uh, this, uh, this need to, um, for in more innovation. And here you have a presentation that has been uh, done very recently, it has been published in, uh, in January, highlighting something that was really interesting. Since more than 50 years, you can see on the left of the uh, of the table um, the innovation process. How innovative are new production of research and, uh, and uh, what has been published? We have several actions that have been on your right. You can see the amount of uh, production that has been done uh, that is increasing year after year. But the innovative part is decreasing dramatically. You have different. Uh, I will not go in detail, but. Um, I will give you the, all the tools for acceding to this very in interesting um, article that show that we need really to go beyond uh, borders and that innovation, it's not yet uh, in, um, in new production of technical uh, issues, but it's, it needs also uh, to, uh, to be done uh, or to coordinate knowledge among themselves. And here you have this nexus. Uh, ID. I don't know if there, if there is no pointer here. Uh, okay, we are really in the middle of nowhere uh, for when we are talking about infrastructure of biodiversity because we are not totally infrastructure, we are not totally environment, we are not totally research, we are not totally applied. We are 
in the middle. So and the middle is never taken into account when we are when we want to have 100% of knowledge that can be addressed. But at the same time, we are addressing really the same issue uh, need for industry, for government, for academia, for civil society, and environment is uh, taken into account all those uh, elements. And it's we need uh, this uh, awareness has been really recently. Uh, recognized as a strong need for the future for improving our policy. It's also encouraging the taking of risk. And uh, when the, in the discussion, the, the, the word of fear against action for action was also said, uh, I wanted to highlight the fact that uh, two recent actions have been engaged, recognizing that we need really to change our way of doing uh, our actions. OECD published, and this report is really fundamental, I think, for, for the future, uh, or to have high risk, high reward research. Today, when you fund research, when you fund innovation, you will never take risk, never. You are, when you have a project, when you fund the project, you are sure of the result of the project because you want to have it. But what is the role of research? It's also to take re risk to have better gain. But who wants to take risk today? Nobody. It's really, uh, it's really a challenge. And if we want also to address, when we are in the middle of, no, of nowhere, like in the green dot in the middle, you need also to take risk. You need also to cross borders. You need also to go to, in, uh, what, to know what has been done in the other side. And really, we need today to have this transformative change of our mind, of our approach of research, and what role could, can be um, given to research and innovation in that way. And also COARA, it's a coalition for advancing research assessment, because if we want also to encourage researchers and innovations and actors also to go beyond their borders, we need also to evaluate them, to encourage them, to support them to go beyond their usual borders. And I think in that way, it's really a very strong point to be uh, to be done in the future uh, for uh, having uh, policies more adapted to reality and to break silos because we, we will have a dramatic problem if we remain into our silos in the future and um, what we can see within the bison project is that the silo has has been started to be broken between infrastructure highways contributing with roads, with, with waterways, with other kind of infrastructure. And we really need also to break the silo uh, more and more wider in the future because um, biodiversity is not isolated for highway. It's not also a single question for, for roads. It's really a broad question. We are living in biodiversity. Even in this room, we have biodiversity, small, but real one. Um, and it's really, it's really a challenge uh, to, be, to be done. So, we tried also within the Bison project to, to break those silos and to answer to, to the needs. And uh, what uh, Thierry didn't mention uh, earlier, we will have the final event in, in, um, uh, of the Bison project at the Council of Europe at the end of June. And it will be an open event on June 6 and 7. Uh, but it will not be only a Bison event, it will be a co organized uh, event with the United Nations. And uh, I think it's a very strong honor that uh, United Nations uh, gave us and a very strong opportunity highlighting the fact that what we are doing in Europe uh, is really a global, uh, has really a global impact uh, in a global scale. And we need also to take the opportunity to, to think beyond borders and to really to think global on the role of UIC. Today, I don't know, uh, you, we have people from the US, we have people from uh, other continents. And I think it's really important to coordinate, to optimize our actions uh, between, uh, between us, uh, to optimize our future policies. So thank you.